Hello, Mariah Castro with U Triple S A. Aaron Collins, Space Coast Symphony. Tim Wilson, what are you looking? Jim Flatman, volunteer, computer training with the tourism office. Anthony Young, what's not going to come from? Deborah Webster, TDO. Greg Wagner with Wagner Consulting. Fly King, retired from tourism. Uh, Stephen Heron with the Titus Old Playhouse. John G. Antonio, Office of Tourism. And Ryan Hayden, TDO. Corner and back there, welcome to the Foley. Sure. Uh, my name is Corinne Wright from the Human Matters Foundation and also Museums of Brevard. And I'm Arthur Pissarro with the Bay of Heritage Gathering, also Museums of Brevard. Hi, I'm Lane Alvarez with Brevard Beach Action. Kenny Wells, Brevard Cultural Alliance. Teresa Lopez, former Melbourne City Council member and the chairman of the Florida Police and Isabel Wright, president of the Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Kyle Trent, uh, Trent Art Foundation and the Space Coast Delta. Native Fool from Green Gables, uh, South Brevard Historical Society, and the Museum of Brevard. Thank you. And we have people, that's audience, and we have people on Zoom. I see Helene Vincent. Helene, can you say hello? Hello, Helene. Hello, Helene. Thank you. Hello, Helene. Hello, Helene. Thank you. Hello, Helene. Hello, Helene. This is Justin Zirconi with Space Coast Pride. Thank you. This is Becky Zingarelli with the Cape Canaveral Lighthouse. Thank you. Two more. Frank Robb with ears. All right, and Ms. Vincent is still muted. She'll come back. Anyone else? Is there anyone else on Zoom that hasn't announced themselves? All right, with that, we're going to talk to Douglas and see what's in line. <laughs> well, just a few housekeeping, um, housekeeping things just to go over from the very beginning. Thank you, everyone, for being here. You know, I'm so happy with this committee, and it's so nice to see all of you again, and I appreciate your time. So um, at the very bottom of your packet, you'll see the conflict of interest form. You don't need to fill that out now. You can fill it out at the end of the meeting, but if you could complete it and give it to me by the time you leave, that would be great. Secondly, microphones. So just notice how it's closed right at my mouth and I have my little green light on. So this is a brand new AV system here in the room. And um, as much as you probably could hear me anyway, it's actually um, for the Zoom and for note taking that we need you to be able to speak clearly. So I appreciate you doing that. And if we can't hear you, I have someone who will text me and I'll make some sort of way to do it correctly. So just warning you. And third, we will be um, following Robert's rules. And we appreciate um, when we are stating the motion, if you could state it, maybe restate it, so then we have it twice very clearly. Um, Whoever is making the motion, and then the second, if you could say your name with it, and then we'll call yay or nay or something. So um, I think that's all of my housekeeping. If there's anyone else on our team that has anything that I forgot, okay. All right, Ms. Andrew, you can thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so board members are requested to disclose any conflict of interest with, with any agenda item or any business relationship between the board. Aaron Collins, Space Coast Symphony. Do you have a conflict? Not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> At some point. Do you have to come? Anything that we're going to discuss today? No. Does anyone else have any conflict? All right, so we'll move on to the next item. Uh, approval of the Cultural Committee minutes from October 2022. Can I have a motion? I'll make the motion. King. King, any second? I know, second. Any second from the members of the hour? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 
and pass over to the approval of the agenda. We have a motion and a second for approval of the agenda. So moved. Motion to move now, right? Second? Second by King. Oh, second second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Second. 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 Minutes and we've forgotten anything yet. Yeah, have I? Yeah, we're working on. All right, we're going to select a vice chair. Um, I would like to nominate Juliet Masani. Anyone else would like to nominate anyone else for vice chair? Second. Does she agree? I mean, did she? Yes. Good. Yeah, we make the motion. Yeah. Miss Sani. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we um we have a nomination and we have a second by um Mr. Ridenauer. All those in favor of Juliet and Sonny being the vice chair? Aye. 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 So the close. Historical recap, Deborah Webb. Okay, so if you turn to page five in your packet, please. So this is a Five year look starting in fiscal year 1819 to 2223. Uh, uh, who has received funding from us? Uh, the amount of funding that they've received per year. And then all the way over on the right is the total funding. It just seemed like since we were building this program and it it looks really exciting when it's down on paper. So I wanted to show all of you um, a lot of work. There's a couple of numbers that are crossed out. Those were um, organizations that received funding, were awarded funding, and for whatever reason, they um, ultimately did not uh, get the reimbursements. They declined during the contracting uh, process or their event was canceled or you know something like that. So um, at the top we have the cultural support grant program. In the middle, kind of down towards the bottom, is the major events. Um, remember that that program is really only in its second cycle now. We also should um, add just as of Tuesday, Thunder and Cocoa Beach was awarded uh, forty nine ninety six. So that number all the way to the right for Thunder Rock is a little bit higher. And as you may know, the, uh, the Cocoa Beach, uh, further down, the Cocoa Beach Air Show was, in, uh, was declined funding for their request for this year. Um, so anyway, at the very bottom, minus the 49.996, um, 1.5 million over the last five years. That's how much money was allocated, or was it all spent? Because some of the people, like that five thousand dollars, wasn't spent. Is that just this is just an inclusion of like how much money was available? So this this is all the money, all the money that was awarded. Money. awarded. Yeah. You know, you said five thousand wasn't awarded to the grant people, right? So, but there five thousand is listed in total funding, right? So this is all that was awarded, but maybe not all of that was um, right. Was okay, completely reimbursed, right? And I'm looking for some Absolutely. So getting back to housekeeping, I've been instructed when we're going to speak, like we do at a regular formal meeting, we have to be acknowledged so that the name is out there so that it's recorded mm -hmm. for minutes and that they can go back. So you'll know that that was Bonnie King that did yeah, that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. So does anyone have any questions on this? Okay. Well, so then let's move along into the Great topic uh, this year, fiscal 23 24 uh, cycle. And I'm just going to throw it over to Peter right now. Yeah, I just wanted to um, give a quick update. And I would encourage anyone that wasn't watching the um, 40 County Commission meeting on Tuesday night, this past Tuesday, there was some discussion. Uh, the TDC had made a recommendation to uh, defer or suspend IRL uh, uh, in the grant program, which is a million dollar program uh, for next year. Um, there was a lot of discussion about it. Uh, obviously, there's some 
um, strong feelings about uh, the importance of um, the, the IRL grants and, and what we do with those. Um, one of the items that was brought up, and it'll go, this is actually going to come back to the TBC on March 22nd. So again, if you're interested in the topic, um, you might want to um, tune into that uh, either by Zoom or you can come in person. Uh, but uh, one of the discussion points was possibly using cultural funds uh, for uh, the IRL grant. So it would be, you know, there's a couple of ways that it, that could happen. One could be a transfer of a million dollars out of the cultural fund into the beach fund. Another way would be to actually change the ordinance and um, possibly either reduce or eliminate cultural uh, grant uh, percentage and put that percentage towards um, the beach fund. So the cultural fund is 10% of the first two pennies, which five pennies. So 10% so of those first two. Or uh, the beach fund is 30% of the first two pennies. Um, so, you know, possibly making an adjustment there. So I just want to make everybody aware of that. I think we should, you know, certainly move forward and um, go through the process of all the uh, things that we have to do today because we don't want to be, you know, sort of behind the eight ball. If we wait a month, then we'll be a month behind. Um, I think it's important for the committee to weigh in on the grant guidelines and all the other things that Deborah's going to take us through. But I just wanted to make everybody aware that, that there's that looming out there. And on uh, March 22nd, I'll be PDC, and then it, it would come back to the board um, on April 4th. So those are all meetings to kind of tune into. I have a question. Yeah, um, so my understanding, what you just said, does that mean that the county commission has the right without voter approval to take away the money that was allocated by voter choice to give a certain percentage to uh, cultural activities? So the way the ordinance works um, with a vote of us, what they call super majority, which is four out of the five commissioners, they can change the allocation of the funds. They can't, they can't not award the five pennies have to be collected because that was voter approved. So they have to collect the five pennies, but how they allocate those five pennies can be controlled by the by the board with a vote of four out of the five. Yeah. Okay, and the other question is, when I watched the meeting, I got the impression, and it probably is the wrong impression, I got the impression that they were talking about a million dollars that they automatically get, and then a million dollars to the grants. Were they only talking about the one the one million dollars that we're talking about that we allocated for grants? Yeah, there was some confusion about um, Indian River Lagoon grants and how that works with us. The, just so everybody here understands, um, the beach fund collects, it's, it ends up being about 25% of the total of the five pennies that's collected. So um, all of that goes into one fund. Out of that fund, a million is carved out and allocated for the Indian River Lagoon grants. So it's still part of the beach fund, but it's a million dollars that's set aside for that purpose. Um, obviously, the, the commission can tell us to spend less. Um, if they will ask it to spend more, they have to change the ordinance because it's in, in the ordinance, it's up to a million. So the maximum is a million. Um, I think there was some confusion about the half penny sales tax that is, is collected in Bullard County for um, the Natural Resources Department. Those funds go into the Natural Resources right. Department's funds, and we don't, you know, we don't have anything to do with that. Right. Got it. Um, Jim Plessman. What's going to be the super majority going forward with the commission? Then it's still there for it's still four commissioners. So regardless of whether there's five seated commissioners or not, um, the county attorney office determined that a super majority still has to be four commissioners. So if there's only four, um, then it have to be all four would have to vote for it. So. Yeah, yeah. So we look at all sorts of things. Well, first of all, how much, how much do we have in reserve? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different places where we have reserves. 
there's not a reserve in the cultural fund, but we have a reserve in marketing, for instance, that's about 1.52, something like the 1.2, 1.3 million. There's a, um, this one, this one right here. Um, there's a 2 million dollars in reserve capital. It was $10 million in the beach fund. All of that got completely wiped out with the two hurricanes. Um, the, uh, just to give you that, those numbers and why why the CDC recommended to suspend any IRS grants is because we have zero dollars in the beach fund after um, doing all the beach repairs. It cost $22.4 million to do all of those repairs. And um, we had we had a, a good chunk of that, but we even needed to go to um, the Harbor Reserves uh, and have that for about $6.4 million on top of what was in the beach. Fund. So we didn't even have enough in the beach fund to do all the work there. So that was the, that was what really brought it up at CDC. Um, but yeah, those are that's really where reserves sit. Um, we're estimating the cultural fund next year. Um, it's going to have a pretty good size carry forward. You know, we've not been spending all of the funds the last couple of years, so um, it's going to be somewhere in the eight to nine hundred thousand range. Plus, if our um, GDP comes in higher this year um, than the budget, then obviously then we'll have additional carry forward funds in, in the uh, budget for fiscal twenty three twenty four. Um, so we potentially we could have a million dollars there um, and still be able to do a cultural grant program um, because obviously then we have them you know the 10 percent of the first two pennies next year should generate you know somewhere in the six seven hundred thousand dollar range something like that so that should be plenty to do a to do a cultural grant program so there's enough money to do both but i think you know the discussion was sort of all over the place so it was hard to follow but um, you know, there there's some interest in looking at cultural grants in general, as usual. That's been a, a hot topic at the board level, and there's been a lot of questions about should we should we do continue to do major events? For instance, they didn't approve the their show. Uh, should we keep doing those kind of grants? Should we, you know, put money somewhere else? So that's those are all the discussion points that have been happening. Okay, well, first, well, I've been, I've been around for a long time, so. Um, you know, the PPG was, or the PPG was put together because um, the state of the beaches. That was the sole purpose. And then, of course, as we move forward and got up to five cents, and we found other purposes to do stuff like that. But my main concern was listening to the dialogue of the commission. There was, there was no talk about reserves. There was no talk about what we're preparing for, uh, which you just discussed here. And I thought, for me, I was disappointed in that. And I think. I really think there's a lack of education at the county commission level <clears throat> because it seems like they think all we do is, is air shows and boat shows and grants and what have you, but there's still other monies within the system uh, that they should be made aware of that's available so that they don't have to make critical targeted decisions. They can make decisions based on funds that we know are available, what we think might be available to help the situation without impacting any. Yeah, and, and, and I think um, point well taken, and I think that the March 22nd PDC meeting will be a chance to provide at least the PDC level that education, and then that information will then be passed passed upward. But yeah, yeah I just think to have a look at the, the total pot of money instead of looking at where can we cut what program. I just think I think the emphasis is wrong on, on from the standpoint. For the county commissioners, I think we not should be smarter than that. No, there's more depth to the CDC and what they're looking at when we just talk about budget. Thank you. All right, I'm just back to Deborah. Okay, if you would please start on page six. So these are the guidelines for fiscal year 23-24. The guidelines have gone through a Pretty significant um, redo or renovation of the house um, and have been approved by our assistant county attorney. 
So you'll see some spaces that are shaded gray. This is really an area that is, um, you know, it, it maybe has specific uh, statutes in it, um, or it's just worded the way that the county attorney um, is happy with and has approved. So um, I'd like to guide this discussion with the, maybe does not focus on that part, but rather the other parts that are unshaded. Um, so if we look at page seven, um, 1.0, um, down sort of in the middle of the page, we have uh, the sort of the mission of it and then the goals. So that would kind of be my first question is, are you happy with that? Do you want to change that? Okay. Really and my plan is to go through this page by page. I think we can go quickly along. Um, but we're so we're on page seven. <laughs> that was a perfect punctuation. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, are we going to vote? Are you going to have to ask to read your vote at the end of each section? So, section 1.0, focus on 1.0, then go to 2.0, etc. Um, as opposed to page by page? Or? Uh, I was actually going to ask that question as well. Um, I think that we can do that. I just feel like if there are changes, yep. okay. it'll, it'll let right. me go quicker. 1.0, is everyone good with that? Are there any changes that you want to make? On page seven. Okay. Is everyone good? Any changes that you want to make? Okay. Let's make it. Uh, we're going to have a motion to not change anything on page seven. I got so moved. We've now heard the motion. King second. Second from King. All those in favor? Aye. Um, those opposed? Okay. okay. 2.0 is the bond of vote seven is a don't touch. So I'm going to say, so can we vote on the attorney's ones? Probably. Okay. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to sit on stage eight. And we have 3.0 anti lobby statement at the top. And uh, that's also something we will vote on. 4.0 is the schedule. So uh, this has us opening the application window on April 19th, uh, closing the window on May 19th. Uh, then there would be some getting ready for um, all of you to start reviewing on May 25th, yeah. would be done on June 26th. Be done with the southerly trajectory. The so one edit I'd like to do is um, this year we will not be using wild pride. So the May 25th meeting I had um, as a wise five sort of lesson meeting. We're going to be using the system that we used last year for the major events. So that's internal here where I would send you Dropbox links and then you have the paper score sheets. So we actually do not need the May 25th um, meeting. So I'd say we'd like to delete that. And then uh, the ranking meeting is July 19th for the cultural support grant, and then the college station is going to the TDC, Board of County Commissioners for approval, jumping in contracts, and then the program starts October 1st. Of course, the disclosure of the dates um, subject to change. Ms. King, I can. Yeah, just had one question. When we mark off May 25th, does that mean we're not going to get educated on the, on the method? Or where do we get educated? Um, or do we need to be educated? Well, you've already done it once. Right. Um, I'm happy to do a refresher at the April 6th meeting. Um, but it, it yeah, would probably okay. take five minutes. Yeah, no, no I get it. Okay. Yeah. I just want, I just, my it's, mind is wandering. I want to make sure right. I And of something. course, if you need any help, you can always yeah. call or email me. We can set up time. Right. But I think that, yeah. Yeah. So there's just, a paper score sheet for all the updates yes. and all the information that can be brought up. Yep, exactly. 
So one score sheet per application. It's just like what you did for major events last year. Okay, so is everyone happy with 4.0? Any other changes to other than the deletion of May 26? Need any new states? Can I get a motion and a second? Stephen here makes a motion to accept 4.0 with the deletion of May 26. Motion from here and second from. Ignore second. Ignore second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, Motion carries. Okay, next page, page nine, 5.0. This is the eligibility. Uh, everything has pretty much stayed, stayed the same uh, on this from last year. We're looking at events that are festivals, art shows that last from one to 14 days, seasonal activities like theaters and the symphony, museums, main streets. Um, the, in italic, just down below, it's just a statement about that these activities must be in person with in person attendees, that uh, online media and radios will not be accepted, um, and that the total visitation is 1,000 out of how many attendees uh, for the eligibility. And then below is very specific eligibility uh, that again has been all approved by the attorney. Yeah. Do you want to send it? That was the question. What was the US thing about this? Anyone have any comments on eligibility? I have a question on the family young. Can I have a question on this? Last year, we had a, um, an applicant make application, and they were a government entity, City of Palm Bay, who puts on that event every year. Um, I, I don't think it's fair that the people with heart groups that a city the size of Palm Bay, the funds that they have and invest they're going to put on anyway, should be receiving one of our grants. I don't think a government entity should be eligible to apply. Um, just my thought. And I asked because this person, the grant writer, was here that day. I asked why, after all this time, did you put in the grant? And they said, because you were putting the mic out. <laughs> oh, um, does anyone else feel that way about eligibility, Ms. King? I'm just wondering, did, did we have anybody who got a grant who was a government entity? Yes. Who, who, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. Probably, I think it's been the only government entity that's ever applied. Okay. Yeah, I could look at the list to see. Okay. Yes. Um, so I just want to see how the rest of the board feels about that. Kind of makes sense. I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know, Andrew. Um, uh, Jim Flatman. There's a place in here for eligibility, and I don't know if city government is that stated in here. I don't, uh, but it is, is, if it is, we need to go back through 5.0 and make sure that we either take it out or add something that says government entities are not eligible for these grants so if, if that's what we want to do yeah so it would be uh, on the bottom of page nine uh letter g if the applicant is a governmental entity the applicant is exempt yes. from supplying the list of documentation but may be required to supply other documentation so that's one area where it addresses the there may be so it's also in C designated as a tax exempt organization as defined in section 501c3 of uh, the uh, general revenue right. code or, or government. government you know. yeah. 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 the question you've got to be careful with the uh, in street programs they're all under the auspices of the city to represent so that's true how do we carve that out of that that's right you're going to have to make some kind of exception because they, they are a urban city they just have to make money. So if you're saying that Melbourne Main Street is actually under the guidance of the city of Melbourne, 
Council? Yeah, the very old guy used to get 501c3. They have a 501c3 under their own name, right? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah, okay. So, as long, yeah, yeah. As, long as, they, as long as they're in a 501c3, that, that, that would qualify them. It's really truly a, like a municipality or. I'm just saying, yeah, because, because how they submitted as a government. Not an article, yeah. I don't want to see through. Right, right. Yeah. Is, it, is it now the main state funded from their CRA? From the city of Melbourne CRA? Yeah. But they still have 501c3. Can't be a new state program without Right. But the cities are 501. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're not. They're not. They're a federal municipality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then we would have been Father yeah. King. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Okay, so then I know that we can't change what they said, but if we, we can, yeah, I mean that in, a, in that case, you could change. We could change, like the league or the government entity, take that out. All right. So can we get a motion and a second to um, delete the government entities being eligible? So move. Right on. So move. Second from Aaron Collins will second. Thank you, Aaron. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. Any other changes to eligibility? So that's Aaron. going to happen in 5.0 and under both of those changes will be happening. Once we take it out, then, yeah, then there's no need for it. Okay. Okay. Any well, other two, right? C and G. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any other comments on eligibility? Yes, Steve um, Harris. I'm just going to bring Aaron. Um, last year, this committee had great discussion about. We had extra funds and we were trying to award smaller organizations with funds. I'm just bringing it up because right. it will come up again and I'm bringing it up now because here's where we're setting the thousand thousand person limit. And that's, you know. And we're going to get to that in the next one. No, it's in, in the eligibility. Oh, yeah, I'm listed in both. I know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's listed in 5.0 and 6.0. Okay. Because we talked at great lengths about lowering that to 800 and a, a smaller award for, for smaller organizations. And I just wanted to bring that up because it was hugely discussed last time. And you're right, this is the time to just yeah. discuss that. And if you watch the county commission meeting, yeah. it would be a real good idea to watch that because what we would be saying if we did decide to lower that is. $15,000 is the entry level. So just bringing in a thousand people. So we would be letting them do less and receiving more, or at least receiving. And then it's the message that it sends to all the others that do all the advertising and, and work really hard to bring in all those if we, if we just go and lower the bar. <clears throat> and again, that's up to for the board. Yeah, Steve, we did do that. And I remember we got our hands slapped for trying to ask for more money. Right. And they kicked that back. So my feeling is if we try and drop the thousand dollars, we're asking for trouble. Thousand people. A thousand people. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're asking for trouble. You know, they're they're gonna they're just not gonna approve it. So I'm Aaron, here. I I would agree with you, but I just wanted to bring it to the table because it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, we're going to sit here when we score and go through wringing our hands again. Thank you. hand ring. It does. It does. All right. Any other comments here on 5.0 eligibility before we move on to the next section? All right. So um. I'm sorry, last question. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, page 10. Well, we didn't vote on 5.0. We only voted on the deletion. We didn't vote to accept the I'm going to get a motion and a second to accept um, 5.0 with the, um, the deletion of the government and the being eligible. Simon makes a motion. Being second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Those opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. All right. Good point. That's page 10, 6.0 available funds. Uh, now, I will note that uh, this was printed, this, this packet was printed prior to Tuesday. Um, Tuesday, 
board discussion. So um, the the funding amounts of 15,000, 20,000, and 25,000 are increased from last year. Um, that is a discussion that you all should have, but um when they 10, 15, and 20 instead yeah. of 15, 20, 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And again, referring back to the meeting at Funny King. Well, no, I'm just agreeing and going, oh, okay, we added it up. No, I'm, I'm happy to see more funding. We got the money. And that's the point. <laughs> Any other comments on the, on the, uh, bring in 1,000, and we say 15, that bring in 1,000 people from out of county, and we say $15,000. Remember, put yourself in the seat of the uh, commissioner. Yeah, I wanted to make a comment under that the money that can be used for it directly support personnel, artistic services, marketing, etc. I'm a little, I'm, the only concern that I have when we offer like 15, 20, 25,000 is that we look at what their marketing plan is, okay? And I, I, I'm trying to say this correctly, but I think we should put that a certain percentage of their money has to go for marketing because if, if they have a special event and they don't market it, how are we going to draw in people from out of town? So to me, we we have to have them advertise. Now, for example, on some of the big ones that we have, like the King Center or whatever, King Center, the playhouses that get a good supply of money. And if you look at their marketing plan, they spend a lot of money in marketing. So if we if they showed that in their marketing plan that we saw, they would, we would say, let's say they took half that money, they would just automatically take it out of their marketing. They get, you know what I'm saying? You replace it with one thing to another. You understand what I'm saying? Because if we don't say that you have to use it for advertising, next thing you know, we could be spending the money on their personnel, the stage, the electric, or whatever, and they get to put on their event, but none of it was for advertising. And even if they had advertising in their marketing budget, we don't have proof that they used it for marketing because it's not part of their plan. So I have a problem with that. I think that we really need it to be advertised. Advertising, excuse me. Jim Bookman. Advertising, hard dollars advertising. Because my question, and maybe Aaron and Steve, I, I can't remember, but when we ask for marketing, are, are you giving us the potential marketing going forward, or are you showing us the marketing from the past? Because I think we also need to see how you marketed the prior year. We, I mean, you know, what your marketing plan was, and maybe there'll be an answer to the advertising dollars in that. I don't know. Just to, going forward, they can tell us we're going to, you know, advertise. I remember once they're going to advertise on TV over in Orlando. Well, you know they don't have them they didn't get enough money request to do an ad in orlando so uh, you know can uh, i answer that um I can't. yeah so the, the answer to that is it might have been in their marketing plan that they were going to put it in yeah. tv advertising but in their in their marketing what they were going to get money for didn't say they were going to do tv advertising it wasn't going to be used for tv advertising we just saw their market but oh they're going to advertise in orlando that's great we don't have proof that they did because it's not well, in there. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aaron, did you look? Yeah, I, I just think. I mean, it'd be kind of tricky to track. I mean, unless we have specific Hi. items that they put forward of what they use the marketing money on. I just, I just don't. Right. Well, absolutely. But again, same thing. They do when they put their plan together, and when you show it, it says um, social media or sure, yeah, you know, and then you can show that you had to pay for that social media because in order for them to get reimbursed, they have to show that they they have to show the check and the front and the back of the check that said that they did the advertising. Like used to do. But if but if it's in, yeah, that's still, what we used to do. No, you still do that. I mean, do we still do that? I mean, we still submit Facebook receipts and all that. Yeah. Okay, well, we still do. But you could say okay. in, your, in your marketing plan that you have over here, but I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm going to take the King Center as an example. I, it, it sticks out in my head that their total budget, let's say, was $100,000 for the $200,000 for the year, and they allocated $150,000 in marketing. 
in their plan here. But what they asked for was some other things. And it, what maybe marketing wasn't included. Well, it should be included. They could take maybe take 50 from here, move it over here. That frees up 50 from here to pay for what they have down here. Right. I'm just saying, when you look at their overall plan, we don't know what they spent. They don't have to prove it. But we do. No, 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 not the overall plan. Um, Only what they have for. Um, Bonnie, years ago, this grant was completely 100% advertising. True. Correct. And then that morphed over the years. I mean, in the 12 years I've been in the Playhouse, it was completely advertising. We at Playhouse use 100% advertising. We still keep that because that's what we do right. is right. But um, we do, I mean, we do see their marketing reports and all that stuff. And, and I, I don't think it's out of the question to ask for a percentage of their marketing. Okay, and, and I'm glad that you agree because it could get to the point where, you know, we're paying for everybody's event, you know, their electricity, their personnel, their whatever, and there's nothing to advertise. They don't advertise it. How are we going to get people to come here from out of town to see the event? So, right. and the thing about it is, if it's in, if it's already in their marketing plan, they just replace the two figures, you know, and they'll receive a check. They will have to show proof that they actually advertise. Jim Hoffman? What? When they turn in their receipts to get their money, don't they have to prove? Isn't yeah. there proof there that they advertise? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it has to be in there. It has to be in what they're asking money for. It's not in their marketing plan. Their money, for example, the King Center has one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in marketing, but maybe they're only asking for fifty thousand in marketing. They only have to show fifty thousand dollars in marketing receipts. They don't have to show the one hundred and fifty because they didn't ask for one hundred and fifty. They only asked for fifty. On the application. On the application, exactly. Well, just a reminder, no one's asking for money. It's um, based on our book county attendees, and then it's, you know, with the matrix, that's how much they're awarded. Secondly, um, they're reimbursable grants. So um, when they're ready, then they submit their receipts proof of payment and some sort of document showing, you know, paid dad or something or other, actually to Kathy the PCA. Um, she gets it all in order and proves it. It comes to me. I look in their contract to make sure that their contract in their contract it says, you know, marketing or whatever that they spent it on. So, you know, essentially they're not spending it on things that haven't been uh, that aren't in their contract. And then it goes on to our finance people, and then they double check it again, and then it finally goes to Titusville. Um, so there's actually four layers of checks and balances. Now, will we want to change these amounts? Because remember, they were 10, 15, and 20. And who would like to speak on that? Do we want to change those amounts? Well, I, think they're okay. Okay. I think they're okay now that we kept it at a thousand people at a month. But I just wanted to go back to the marketing the deal about advertising and marketing. Maybe we should just ask for advertising dollars and not marketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they're they're gonna their advertising dollars are gonna be part of the marketing. Yeah, yeah, just as what Steve was saying years ago, it was only for advertising. But these, but we have a lot of, I don't want to call them little people, but little events that don't have a lot of money. And because they didn't have the money, they couldn't pay for a staging or they couldn't pay for uh, to bring in somebody special to do something. And over the years, it kind of morphed into saying, okay, we'll 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 let you pay for this and we'll let you pay for that. We got away from the quote advertising. And I'm seeing it more now as I as I do this, and I have I don't have a real problem with them paying for some of the little things like the staging or whatever. I do have a problem in the sense that the whole purpose of having cultural art and special event activities is to advertise of what a wonderful place the Space Coast is, bring people in from out of town, hopefully spend the night at a hotel. And um, you know, so I think that we're we are justifying why we are doing events and giving money to these people to put on these events. Aaron, did you want to 
Yeah. Okay. I would like to mention one of the things that I noticed and that I look for when I'm grading is I want a city marketing plan. We ask for what are you, what is it? Yes. They don't upload it. They say flyers, um, email, my email list from last year, um, my friends' phone calls in Facebook ads. And right. that's it. That's what they say. Right. Um, some of them, and you can tell by my scoring who does it, some of them do an excellent job. If they're going to do radio, whatever, they spend the whole schedule. What time, what time, how many minutes or how many seconds their ad is, even a whole script of what their ad is. Others, if they're going to do a Facebook ad, give us a sample of what it's going to be. Or if it's not there and you're telling me, I go to their Facebook page. If I'm looking for what did they do last year and I try to get Try to compare it. If they tell me they did magazines, depending again on who the applicant is, I go there and I try to verify whatever they're saying. They should be uploading these things. There is plenty of room for them to upload as much documentation as they possibly need. But for them to get these nice chunks of money that they're getting, they should give us what we're asking for and, and not just do this in a rush the night before it's due. Right. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if we put a percentage to that to say that. That the, the money that's allocated to them, if it's fifteen thousand, then they must show an ad. They're, the advertising plan for reimbursement. Maybe it's fifty percent. Do you want to say fifty percent? Do you want to say forty percent? But I think a percentage should be on there. Many of the big people, you know, that we're giving big monies to, their marketing plan is very huge. So all we have to do is just replace the monies. So they're already they say they're already going to spend 150,000 on advertising. Great. Take 50 from that, so to speak, and put it over here and that way they can free up that 50 and put it back into whatever they want to do. Aaron, I'm sorry. May yes. I ask, do we know like a uh, from past recipients since you get all the reimbursements, like how much I mean, in general, is spent on advertising percentage-wise from organizations compared to just general program support? Definitely. I mean, because you get all the reimbursements, so I'd be curious to know from the past year what what that. So um, I think that's a Webster question. So I do have this. Um, Stephen, do you think it's fair to say a quarter of yours? I'm doing some quick math here. No, wait, that's not good math. Um, <laughs> uh, 5% of his total expenditures. Um, so this these final reports that I'm getting are, it, it's total expenditures of your whole season, not of, um, you know, if so, if it's an event. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think it's fair to say that 5% of Stephen's budget is well above whatever he's getting from us in a, in a grant. Okay. You can't do it that way. Yeah. I, I think the question is would we be able to look at a post event report and determine what percentage was spent out of the grant amount? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. On, on marketing, and yeah. the answer to that is today we don't have that information, right. 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 but we should yeah. have that in the future. Yeah. Something we could yeah. certainly yeah. create. Yeah. So what I'm looking at right now is, is total expenditures. So that's not reflecting what was um, allocated from the grant amount that they received. But we can change the final report to to get that information. I'm just hoping that I made myself clear. I mean, I I know what I'm talking about. I'm just, and I know Steve knows what I'm talking about. I, I just want to know if my fellow, many people understand what I'm trying to say. You would like to, Aaron Collins, if you would like to propose that there is a percentage set on absolute spending on just marketing. Market. Exactly. When I, and when I say marketing, I'm talking about um, marketing, marketing material. Yes, marketing. Advertising. How are people going to know about this event? Right. How are we going to get them to, to know about the event? That to me is, I think, an important. That's advertising. Like, that's advertising. So you are simple. It's advertising. You market someone. It's advertising. What they're going to do. If you want to get out, put the word out for somebody. Or that's advertising. So I mean, I'll make the motion if you all would agree that fifty percent 
should show that unless somebody wants it to. I'd say 50% of the money should show that you're advertising. 50% of the grant money. 50% of the grant money, exactly. Now, they may, you know, they, on, on their regular marketing plan, they may have way more. We're just exchanging for money. I'm just saying that I'm saying 50%. That's my motion. I don't know if anybody wants to do that or change it. I have a question. 50% of the out, Sandra Young. Oh, my own rule. 50% of the out, out of county advertising? Well, yeah, because well, I think what we, what we well, overpaid for advertising is going to be out of county. Isn't that correct? So we still do that? Um, I'm sorry. It, then there's no ambiguity as to what well, they didn't say they had to spend it. Oh, yeah, it's only 50% of the grant money. Yeah, I think when they do advertising, we still say they have to be out of county. I'm not with the question. Mr. Murnau. Um, we say 50%, but I look at it from a from the commission standpoint. Then, if you're going to commission, I'm going to want to know what the other 50%. Right. Yeah. So, so, we're going to be able to answer that question? Yeah. It's on the application. Right. And okay. They should list, you know, whether it's for you know, staging or you know, materials for their events that isn't advertising. County yeah, commission gets that application. So there's, there's actually a question that uh, has um, a couple of different um, they can do artistic expenses, marketing and advertising, um, general operating costs. General operating is definitely one. So then they can choose. So then those are the items that we use then to write the contract. So then those are the expenses that we are accepting. Yeah, that's in that's in the end. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm just for, for the discussion, why would we say why would we say 50%? Why why wouldn't we say 80%? That's why we're we're trying to get a number now. Well, it used to be a hundred, excuse me, two hundred, it used to be a hundred, so you know, we dumbed it down to whatever. Yeah. So, you know, we we need to sit. So I'm saying, I'm yeah. saying we may have down too much. So maybe thirty percent is a good thing. <laughs> it sure makes it a lot easier for your application. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. will be coming up, and I see your card, so I'll be giving to you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, my comment is on this particular. Okay, this is the board. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so we're still trying to get a number. 50s on the table, 80s on the table. Anyone else want to talk some numbers here? Aaron Collins, I'd personally like to see it stay at 50%. I mean, I mean, at least I, I don't, I can see us increasing that number year by year, but if we're going to do it, I think 50 is a safe number for this coming year and not to drastically change something, you know, immediately. Stephen Aaron, I, I was going to say the smaller groups are going to find it hard to spend seventy five hundred dollars on out of county advertising. It's just Why? expensive. It's expensive. I mean and you're spending two or three thousand dollars just to advertise out of town. And we're now giving them fifteen thousand dollars, which is just smaller events it's a lot of money. And you gotta front that money before you, you get it back. And I'm just as as a larger entity now who was a small entity at, at that time it, it was hard to it was hard to get that 50 percent i know and that was my point andrea young that was my point in saying do we want to keep these numbers where they are because you're right it's reimbursement they have to put it out for i mean if we're going to give them more for the same amount of people that they're bringing in doesn't we don't have to go up to the other side we can go to twelve thousand and twenty um in fiscal 2008 it doesn't have to be the whole amount or leave it where it was because you're right, if these smaller groups, they have to spend it in order to get it back and they can just blow them right out. They might bring in a thousand people, but they still can't spend that much money in Africa. But Aaron, that's Aaron, sorry. Um, we tried to up that last time though. So we can always come back down, but the commissioners would not let us go up. So wouldn't it be prudent for us to like set our slides higher? And if they don't, if they don't spend their awarded money, then they don't spend their awarded money. That's just my feeling. True. Mm -hmm. Andrea Young again. The commissioners have to approve this increase that we're giving them, right? I, I think we're going to get some pushback on these increases. 
that's just my saying. Mm -hmm. that I'm not going to use it on that. Dear Platinum, you're, you're absolutely right. We will. And I think the, the, the large guys uh, that kind of put us in a, a little bit of a bind in asking for more money. Asking for more money. Uh, well, they can't. I, I'd, like well, to give them, I'd like to give them the money and set it, but what I'm hearing is that. And I don't know how we look at the small people and the you know the small groups. What are we looking at as a small group compared to Steve and and Aaron and everything? And the fact that if we give them fifteen thousand dollars, they can't spend seventy five hundred dollars out of county. I guess my question is, why not? Where where are they going to spend the money, and why couldn't they spend that? But, but you know, it's a fair question. You say they can't spend it. Why can't they? Because they don't have the money. Because they don't have the money, and how can you spend it? Okay. Up front. Up front. Yes. It's more funny thing. Yes, funny. Yes. If they got their ten thousand dollars, they still had to spend ten thousand dollars to get the ten. So yeah, if they got the ten to pay for the staging and the electrician or whatever, why can't get why can't they get that same amount of money for for advertising? Now let's the because they have to spend on the stage. And that's why. Yeah, but who gave them the money for it? Who gave them the money for the staging? They have no money. I mean tickets, donations, I mean those type of things. Is it going? Yeah, but you see what I'm saying? They I got do the see money. That. Yes, yeah, they got the money. Um, now, can I throw out something else? Yes, one. Um, of course, Peter's going to look at me like, "What the heck are you saying?" <laughs> um, but let's just say, say but let's just say for a minute that we, because Chas, it's very, very important that these that these events are advertised so that people can see we're just a cool place to be because we have all this stuff going on. But the small people don't have that money. What if? What if? Here, here, Peter's going to glare at me. But what if you said, okay, 50% of the money has to be for advertising? And the little guy, they don't have that, you know, they don't have that $7,500 to do for advertising. The TBC does. What if the TBC promoted the event, but only did for each event, like, okay, $7,500 for the mural festival that's coming up? So $7,500, and then, and then they would spend that money to promote, to try to get people here. It could be, so I, I don't think I know he's thinking and he's thinking, but that way they don't have to because then they worry about the 7500 for something else, you know what I mean? Now, some of the people may not need that, maybe you don't need that, and maybe you don't need that money that you, you can advertise on your own or do whatever. But some of the people that don't have it, that's a meeting that would have to be with the TVC, the marketing people, as to how, how, do, we, how do we do this. Can you, sorry, Aaron Collins, can you clarify? So you're saying that that their team would be advertising for them, go through different advertising routes they already have for these groups? Number one, yes, absolutely. Okay. And number two, they could ask, they could sit down with the company. Let's yeah, say, I'm looking at the mural festival, you can sit in front of me, but let's say but, and the mural festival, there's a, there's a magazine that goes to all mural people or whatever. I'd love to take a full page out of that. Well, he sits down with the marketing team at the TVC and they can say, okay, mural festival, we will do that magazine ad, we'll do radio, we'll do whatever they decide on or whatever, but it's handled through the office and then that way we don't have to worry. And we and we kill two birds with one stone in the sense that we are doing exactly what our mission statement was for promoting and advertising wonderful events that we have on the Space Coast. Now, I know that's putting a load and that's putting something on Peter's office and the you know, I mean, I, my my concerns there's three concerns I would have the first concern is we don't have the staff to you know have a marketing consultation yeah you know program going on with 20 30 groups so uh, you know that's um you know that the staffing level is just not there to do that the second problem I have is we don't necessarily have contractual relationships with all of the media outlets that they would want to participate in. Um, you know, we have to go through a very extensive uh, um, 
approval level. So all of our marketing plans are approved by the Board of County Commissioners. All of those suppliers are pre-approved. The, the contracting process is, if it's anybody that's dealt with our contracts, like Stephen and me, know that it, it takes a while to go through that. It's, you know, months and months of work. Um, so, you know, if somebody were to come to us for your, your example, a mural uh, event and wants to put it and add in a particular program, we don't have that contractual relationship set up with them. So that that's quite a bit of time. The third thing is it, it puts the, um, it puts the burden on the TDC and the, and the county commission, frankly, to put that money out up front. What if that event doesn't occur? What if something happens where the event gets canceled? Now you've spent right. five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on something, and you're out that money. So I think you know, whenever I've been before the board, they always ask me, "Are these events, you know, is it is are these grants given?" in advance or are they given on reimbursement? And I always say yeah, reimbursement. reimbursement and they really like that because right. it's, 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 right. it means that, you know, the county's protected. So I think that's probably even more than the first two problems, which we could probably solve at some point. I think that last one uh, it would be a, be a tough one to overcome. And, and for us, it, it can't be reimbursed for money. They didn't actually spend out of their coffers. They have to have their receipt showing they spent the money, they can't jump on board if someone um, with someone else's advertising. That would be subverting the whole system. And I don't think yeah, I don't think that's what we were saying. I don't think that that was what we were saying, to be honest with you. I think, you know, that 75 that 75 or whatever amount of money, 7,500 would have been allocated. But but I get what you're saying. I and I get what Peter's saying. I because I know things are different in the terms of like contracts and things of that nature. It's just too bad because it it could help the little people because they don't have the money. But it's still important that we add we have, that it get that that their that their plan that they are going to be reimbursed for has advertising in it. What percentage? That's what we're here to talk about. Okay. So I said fifty percent. He says eighty. I don't know. Somebody else want to throw that. But right now, I'll go back to 50 and it's still there. Okay. All right. So, can I get a motion for 50% of the grant money needs to be spent on out of county advertising? Madam Chair, can I re just re read it so that just make sure everybody agrees to, the, to what I'm suggesting? So, at the in, on page five under 6.0, below where it gives the breakout, you know, of um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the bottom. Of that. Page 10 at the top right is what I was looking at. In the middle there, where it says the, the, the paragraph where it says the cultural support grant program is a reimbursable grant, et cetera, et cetera. And then upon receipt and acceptance of a valid documentation, will be reimbursed up to awarded amount. And I was suggesting that we have 50% of grant award must be spent on out of county advertising. Sounds good to me. 50% of grant award must be spent on out of county advertising. So if that's acceptable, then that could be included in the motion. Can I get a motion to add that statement to that paragraph? Right now, so moved. Second, second by team. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. All right, so we still um, have asked the question, do we want to stay with these amounts, 15, 20, or 25? Madam Chair, can I just mention them? The, the reason, so the reason that those amounts are 5,000 higher was when I looked at the budget, um, you know, last week or two, you know, we we anticipated a higher level of revenue from TDC. Um, that was before, the conversation that took place at the board meeting about potentially using cultural funds to pay for uh, IRL grants came along. So I probably would not have increased those amounts had we known about that conversation. So that I'm just throwing that out there, Madam Chair, sure that that's that's why they were increased was we looked at the budget, so I'm like, okay, we could probably afford it. But now if the board says no, we're going to use cultural funds to pay for IRL grants. And we probably couldn't afford it. So, all right. So we're we're going to leave them where they are, unless the county comes and cuts them back. 
So when I came out of that, I would want it out of state. Man. I, know, I can write it here, but I just to speak it out loud. I want to, I would out a statement that the funds are predicated on the availability of, uh, you know, appropriate budget levels in that, in that uh, fund. Well, this happened before with um, um, COVID, the first year we, right, we, we, we had it and we awarded people the money and then we had them to say, sorry, we can't give that to you. So it wouldn't be the first time. No. <laughs> we don't want to go back there. All right, so we're not going to go back to the 10, 15, and 20. We're going to stay with the 15, 20, and 25 as it's written here. Okay, anyone else want to make any adjustments to 6.0? Okay, what we just talked about. All right, can we get a motion to approve 6.0 as written or as amended? I know so moves. I can't second. I can't second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Okay, bottom of page 10, 7.0. Is all attorney work, so we that. So moving into 8.0 application middle procedure. Uh, so I have, um, for your consideration, I have added um, an extra step. Um, you may recall for those um, people who were on last year, our um, measurement tool to be able to measure our out of county visitors was just in the very beginning stages. We didn't really have it um, to be able to measure things right away. So I had you, uh, whomever uh, completed the application and I had you review all the applications and then later we went through, so I got the information and we realized that some had not met the eligibility. So now we have all 25 um, organizations in our system that applied last year and there's been about, 12-ish uh, new, new organizations that have come forward. Um, Brian, um, my intern and I are working very hard to get them in the system. Um, we will have them, all that data, well ahead of the April 19th application system. But what I'm proposing is um, to set up a link that could be widespread for any other groups and call it like a pre-qualification um, step. So then anyone else that we don't know about, they jump in there at that point, they put in their location data, date of the event, we get it into our system. So then if uh, this application is ready to launch on the 19th, we'll be able to know, no, you don't need the eligibility, so you don't need to fill out the application and ultimately less work for them, less work for all of you. If they don't do the pre-qualification step, if they're brand new and they don't do the pre-qualification step, they will still have the opportunity to complete the application, but then we'll get the data in and then we'll be able to assess that to whether or not it meets the eligibility for you all down the line to review the application. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're calling it a pre-qualification step. Yeah, well, um, so it's in the guidelines. Okay. Um, so it's it's new. Um, so yes, I'd be looking for a um, a motion um, to accept 8.0 as written. Do I have motion written now a second? Second. 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 Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Page 12, 9.0. Uh, more evaluation criteria. Um, pretty similar to last year. Uh, no. Um, no, no changes on, on this um, as stated. So it's pretty much the same. Um, BCA will be reviewing the applications, kind of getting them in order, working with me, um, our staff to get them in order after they're finished. So then we can turn them over in good order to get them out to you um, for your review. And then we would have the review and ranking after you submitted your scores. That meeting is July 19th. 
Uh, we have that nice big Excel document. Go ahead and um, we still have in there, we're dropping the low and the high score so that we can do average trimmed mean. And we would go through um, and the minimum score for that average trim mean is 80. Jim Hoffman. Yes, uh, Deborah, I just want to make sure I understand this. Number four under nine applications have met the minimum of county visitor requirements for that funding here. So when we get the application, we don't have to worry about how many people were there or anything like that. If we see the application, they've met the people. Exactly. Okay. In, in fact, um, what we just approved in the previous section basically says they can't apply until we give them their certification that they have minimum number. So you won't even see an application if they don't. Okay. okay. So in the end, you know, if people haven't qualified, they won't be doing extra work that they don't need to do. You all won't be reviewing That's applications right. that aren't eligible. Anyone have any questions on that? I have a question. I'm just asking for your questions first. All right. So regarding the scoring, when we throw out the high and throw out the low, we have done that in the past um, because usually when we do this, you can get two or three more people to qualify that they may do that sense of a point that they needed or maybe several points that they needed to come up to the 80%. But it wasn't just done. Well, I guess since it's been done every time, hasn't it? It's not a, as needed thing. It's just the way. So this is going to become blurred by right now. Not an as needed thing. This is we're going to do it to all of them. So lot behind the ball. And all the other, um, all the other committees have scored the same way. So lot behind the ball. That's a great question. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd say 100 percent that that's true. Beaches them anyway. But I don't know if sports is. And John hasn't been here through any of the cycles, so he doesn't know either. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if sports are the beaches, but nowhere. Okay. Well, I mean, I wouldn't want to say the rule that it has to be done that way for the other committees. I mean, there were, were individuals, so I, I wouldn't want to know that rule. But if we're going to do it that way here, since it's set now, this is the way it will always be done. For this year, yeah. Here. <laughs> Definitely, maybe. <laughs> All right, and I guess that answers my question. This is the way we're going to do it this year, if, if that's your question. Well, I kind of like to leave it up in the air and not do it unless we have to, um, because it, it is nice to give as much as we can to as many people as we can. But then that's not the only point of us doing this. I mean, I know that that's why we do this. Um, so this habit that we have to do it, is there not a case where that may come back to bite us where we haven't done that? That could be. I, I, I do remember I had in my notes that, that some of you um, at the last meeting had some comments on the quality of the application. And so, you know, there was also already some um, you know, so I, I think that this doing it this way helps them. Um, yeah, I, I want to say when you looked at the trim mean, it's a couple of points higher. So it got a couple of people over the threshold. Because 80, the, I will say, none of the other committees that do grants have an 80 minimum score. So if you're not going to use the trim mean, maybe you lower the score to something 75, which is what. The other committees have um because it, it was usually it's like two or three points off if you didn't do the trim mean. So I asked the question King asked um because um, I remember last time when we were doing the um you know grading and everything we had to go back and I said oh instead of giving her a 79 or whatever I give her an 81 but, but that wasn't long to do I mean that was a group a group thing, right? So that wasn't a problem. Everybody voted on it. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, we, so we did that only because we wanted to get more money. Exactly. So we were changed, we changed scores. And, and I like the fact that we did it in an open meeting and everything did it. So to me, to change a number, I mean, hey, if we know 80% and we're this close to whatever, when we're all doing the grading and we see that 
someone comes behind by a half point, we just raise, we just change our point. Well, we're not the only ones that see that. County commissioners see that too, and they see when we're doing that, and they're trying to get money for other. I see what you're saying. For other things, and if they see that we're doing that, gotcha. But they, the score well, is, they kicked it back. They wouldn't allow us to do that. Right, but the score is the score. Manipulating the score to reach right, a certain right, right, thing right. is not why we're here. The score is the score. Seventy-nine point one doesn't doesn't qualify you. Aaron Collins, I just Aaron. I want to circle back to something I brought up last year, and we might have talked about it, but I really would like to see the scoring change a little bit where there's, I mean, as you mentioned, 80% or above. I would like to see it because we're not really giving these groups an accurate judging, in, in my opinion. You know, I, I think if we make the threshold in 60%, it's like good, great. You know, I mean, if we spread the percent, I don't know how, how to say it particularly, but if we spread the percentage just out just a bit more, so it's not refined to that top percentage, you know, I think it would, it would help not only us, but it would help the um, applicants get a better understanding of their application and, and what can be improved on coming here. So I don't understand why we can't say, uh, you know, like, I don't know how we would do it, but I think we can change the percentages to be more accurate. We're looking for a final number to judge to determine that they get the money that they've asked for. Maybe I just don't understand. Yeah, that. no, what I mean is like rather than being everything up in like the 90%, 90, I mean, right. like a, a 80, yeah, like 70 and 60 are still good. Whereas 50, 40, 30 are, you know, then, you know, those are not good. You know, I just think we should, we should expand the percentage just a bit more to give these groups a more accurate telling of their applications. And, you know, because we are all finagling the numbers, you know, to try to meet in this little small little window where we just expand the window a little bit more. Um, so I, I still don't understand. You mean so we're, you have to reach 80 in order to get the... I would say you have to reach like 70. So you do, you want to lower the score. You want to lower the score, but, it, but make that where it's more accurate scoring. I feel like many of us are just like trying to get into the 80s and 90s. Whereas if 50 was a good score, but 100 is a great score, you know, I think that would be a more accurate telling for these groups. And for us, it would be easier for us to judge. I think those are two separate things. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand it. Um, you know, if you want to, I don't know, I just, I don't think it should come down to, 50% or 60%, you know, I, I, I think the lowest we want to go is 70%, but, um, I know, uh, you know, you know, Jim, Jim right now, you, you remember that we tightened up the requirements because the I mean, commission right. was trying to tell us you don't get tighter, you don't get anything. Right, return on investment. Yeah. Right. So we, right. we tightened it up. I think, and then we only got, I wasn't here last year, but the market, we only got half what we asked for then. So now, we put ourselves in the bad right here. We just increase the amount of money. And the lower the bar. And I don't think like, we're lowering the bar, though. I think we're just changing well, the we're bar. We're lowering the score. It's not lowering anything. Well, it, it, yeah, no, we're lowering the score so they can get the money. Yes. No, you, you, we are doing that now. We are oh. changing our scores to get more groups to go, oh, we'll just give them a 90. When in, in fact, their score should have been a 70. Which would have been more accurate and would have given them a better idea. I just but that's on the score. That's our responsibility to not do that. Yeah, I'm just if we base it on like school grading or you know F is 50 and then a D is you know 60 and then C is 70. I just feel like that would be more accurate telling. Yeah, and we'll find out that the kids can't read at 70. Not just like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we didn't drop it to eight hundred. We stepped, we kept it at a thousand people, and we raised the money. Um, and and now to drop the score, I think I'm not saying to drop the score. I'm just saying to change the. But, but uh, it helped, how how we look at it by the county commission? I, I know what you're saying, and I know what we're trying to say. But they're going to look at it like we dropped the score. Yeah, we dropped the, we and more let's, money and less and less requirements. Let's let Deborah speak here now. Okay. So I think what Aaron is saying is about in the score sheet, which we'll get to, yeah. mm -hmm. um, is the points allocation. 
I think that that's where we could perhaps peek at and maybe it um, reflects what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. and King oh, okay. is a comment. Yeah. Yeah. The only comment I have to say, now I understand where you're coming from, <laughs> but the bottom line is we as scorers, if we want to see this person get money, we want to make sure that ours divvy up to that point where they're not in the in you know in the bad zone. So I mean if you really want to see that person, that company, that organization get funding, you have to make sure that your numbers are there. Yeah, I was just last year's application, yeah. just based on last year's applications, I was a little disappointed or just like, does this really deserve an 80 from me? When it were in fact many of them didn't, but still I found that we were giving them these scores just to see them get into the grant. So I feel you know, we were being dis yeah, we were being very disingenuous uh, in that. Right. Right. There was discussion about did they really answer the question? Right, and we or did they really answer what we were asking? Right, right, and because yeah. my scores were really bad. You, I was the lowest score. Yeah, and yeah. talked about it. Like, what are you seeing that I'm not seeing? And we did talk about it. We said, well, next year's another year. We're just we're going to judge them fairly. The score is the score. Is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and we throw off the spot and we throw okay. off the top. And that's where it is. I don't, um, I guess it's not low on the bar, it's just scoring it as it's truly to be scored and reading it that way. Right. But if we did truly score as they were, then I feel like there would have been many applications that would have been accepted, you know. And that would be sad. And that would be sad. So that's why I just. So, but teach them to, you would just show they need to do a better job next year, next time. That's all. That's all. If we just give it away, then, then that's, we're teaching them how to apply if we do that. To be, and teach them to do that. Okay, so where are we now? We're on. Sorry, Debbie. Uh, so, just to clarify, your wish is to continue um, with the average trainee. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, it appears we're, we're staying at eighty. Yes, in, in throwing out the high and throwing the trainee, throwing out the high and throwing the low, staying at eighty. And so it appears that there's been no change with 9.0. So it's going to be a motion right. to the Motion for the hour. Second. King. Okay. King. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. So 10.0 is um, has changed slightly. <clears throat> Instead of uh, meeting a mid year report, there will just be one report, a final report. So that's either um, after the event say for example circuit santa's their event is december 24th and then there would be a final report after uh, that event is done or at the end of the um fiscal year just one report so, so that's the change in that and do we get the i would um, do we get the final report in our packet when we're reviewing the application Definitely add that. So I would spin, but yes, we can add that for sure. I think it would be very interesting to see it. And, and I'd like in that final report, I would like it to be that they requested fifteen thousand and they got thirteen thousand six hundred ninety-one dollars. Or did they get the full fifteen? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, what did they use of their? And I'm sure. I think I talked. I think you said everybody got their exact amount yet, which is good to know. But. Um, I think it's just good that we we see their final report and know what they. So that's not needed to be done. I think it would be good to add a sentence that says, you know, in, included in the final report will be the amount of the final re, amount of reimbursement and something to that effect. But what's fear is they're not asking for an amount; they qualify for an amount. Correct. I know some people don't. <laughs> exactly. Some people they get fifty thousand. They qual. They got thirteen thousand or whatever. You're right. But it, but we're not going to remember. Like I don't remember what I did last year. But if I see the final report and they're asking for money this year, just out of curiosity, last year they got thirteen thousand or whatever. They couldn't got fifteen, but you know, well, no, they got they qualified for thirteen and they spent thirteen. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else's comment on anything for 10.0 and we're going to be adding to the final report? And we have a motion to move by um, Rittenauer, second by? All seconded. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, 11.0 uh, is your training section, 12.0 uh, has changed ever so slightly about the credit and logo, but that is um, approved by the attorney. Um, 13.0 grant benefits. I just think it's important that um, all the grant recipients know what else um, they get in, um, when they apply, which this is the same as last year. Um, they are able to put their event on our website and they are provided a website Pixel for their event as well. So if I could just have a motion on 13.0. We're going to spare these. He's going to go back now. 17, 18. So, I mean, just so everybody knows why this, this language was previously in the grant agreement that we used to write, and it was taking forever to write contracts. So, by now, by having it in the um, grant guidelines, the attorney's office believes that we can get the grant agreement down to like a page or two, basically, that just gives them the here, here's the award, here's the amount of the award. But all the terms and conditions are already in the guidelines, which will be then attached to the to the to that. So it's going to make our process internally a lot a lot quicker. Are they have to check all the squares and say they want to change all the terms. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, in addition yeah. to that, when the applicants um, start the application, the guidelines are there, so they are seeing all of the expectations of all of this from the very beginning rather than getting this contract language later on in the contract. At the very end. So uh, on page 23, you'll see Exhibit A, Grant Scoring Worksheet. So this is just really a placeholder. This is where this document is going to go. But we're going to look at this document separately at the end of this packet. So just kind of skip through the score sheet. That's just a placeholder. And the great news is that is all of the guidelines. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving into the application. This is uh, page 28. So again, the application will be done on our system that we use, which is called Alchemer. Uh, it is an online application system for the applicant. They um, will input the data, they can upload documents, they can uh, finish the application, submit it, and then it comes to a dashboard that I have access to. And Kentucky and I, um, with PCA, we will work together and get the package together with all the application and the supporting documents all in one PDF for all of you. And that's what you will receive as their application for you to review. Okay, so um, what I'd like you to do now is on page 28. This is essentially, obviously not what the application looks like, but this is the questions that are on the application. So this is um, what it was last year. So I'm just looking at number one right now. So you know, fiscal year has not been updated. That will be updated, of course. But are these the questions that you want to ask? This is the time to change the answer. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Fine, King. I've awarded funding. How will the grant funds be used? Since we're talking now about advertising 60%, maybe we should have advertising in there to show out of county So, how would the other 50%, excuse me, hearing yeah. comments, uh, how would the other 50% be used? 50% must be used on marketing side, right. and then how would the other 50% be used? All right. Anyone else want to make a comment since we're here right now on this?
Aaron Collins, can you remind me, do we have a word count on any of these questions? I forget that on the application. I mean, do they have like a 1,000 word count or on any of these questions, or are they just free? So um, moving from the wise five that did have a word count, there's not a word count in this, but there can be a word count. I believe there should be a word count. Okay. Okay. I agree. Okay. And what would you like to do? Uh, Ooh, high. I mean, it's a lot higher than that. Now it's in the thousands. Yeah, no, I, I, but we're doing it differently now. Then now they're, they're not really. I think some way. questions can be that, but I feel like there's maybe one or two questions that might benefit from having a little bit more than 500 words. I don't know. I haven't looked at them yet, but I. Uh, well, number number one says be brief and concise. 500 words. <laughs> <laughs> well, 500 words, not 500 characters. Correct. So 500 words. words. Yeah. So, Aaron Collins, so number four is not technically a question, correct? It's just by a marketing plan. Yeah. So, so number four is actually basically upload your marketing. Plan. Upload your marketing yeah. plan. Okay. So, there's a feature that's gotcha. that you upload that document. So, all of those things will be highlighted in the marketing plan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is there do we need to provide more detail or guidance to this section? Number four. Number four, right? Are there specific things that you want to see that we can at least give them a, a direction? I feel, I mean, I based on looking, Aaron Collins, based on looking at last year's applications, I feel like a lot of people didn't know maybe what a marketing plan was, or so that might be helpful. Um, helpful to make sure we give them guidance on marketing plan to advertising. You're 100% correct. I felt the same thing. They obviously yeah. don't know what a marketing plan is. Right. So. And then King asked the question King. on the on the marketing when they show what the money's going to be used for, which is stated because their marketing plan may be $150,000. We need to know out of the $150,000. What fifty percent is going to be used on what out of the hundred fifty? See what I'm saying? So you want to know? So I guess that'll be a separate something that'll be added underneath. It says if awarded, how will the grant funds be used? So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says if awarded, how will the grant funds check all that apply? Then it, okay, so marketing. But we but then when they give us the marketing plan. Out of that 150,000, 7,500, if they got 15,000, has to be used for up. So, out of that marketing plan, what are they using? What are we going to pay them back for? Are we paying them back for radio? Are we paying them back for TV? Are we paying them back for a magazine? You know, I don't so want to itemize. You have itemize. to have it itemized for what they want their money back for, not the whole $150,000 plan. We want to see their plan. That's great. But we don't. Yeah. They're not going to turn in their hundred fifty thousand dollars that they spent on advertising. They're only going to spend in the seventy five hundred that they requested. I see. You want to upload their entire marketing plan and itemize the fifty percent amount of grant money. Well, we asked that. them to provide their marketing. Right. Plan. I'm sure you're worried. Oh, okay. Well, are you, are you talking about four or that on the previous page? Whichever page how, they were. How will the grants be used? Is, is that where you want to see the? the Advertising, you know, the fifty percent and where it's spent, or do we want to put it in four? So the question. I mean, we just need to see for the people that get fifteen thousand or whatever, yeah. whatever the half is. They can take their marketing plan, and at the bottom, let's say it's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Then just, or they can even highlight, "I'm using this for my reimbursement." So can may I make a yeah. Madam Chair? Yeah. 
Okay, so under the first section uh, on page 28, where it said if awarded funding, uh, what I wrote was 50% of grant must be used on out of county advertising. Um, how will the other grant funds be used? Check all that apply. And then instead of marketing, I crossed out marketing with the bullet point, I just put out of county advertising and in parentheses 50% of grant award. Then under number four, I uh, just changed the wording to provide your, your marketing slash advertising plan. And then at the end of that, I said, itemize how the 50% of grant funds will be used. Perfect. I think in my simple opinion, I think that covers it all. And yeah. really would you say that again, how they would say how uh, they itemize? itemize. So at the end, after it says uh, right. specific marketing activity, timeline, and budget, then it will say itemize how the 50% of grant funds will be used. Okay. Aaron Collins, I, my only concern is when they're writing this grant, we're talking, they're not going to get this money for another how many so months. And advertising plans change or, you know, ways like, so if they say, I'm going to advertise in Orlando Sentinel, for example. But something happens where the Orlando, you know, they've been priced out of the Orlando Sentinel. Then how? What's going to happen then for these organizations? My case says, but I'm reviewing it. If you tell me you're going to advertise in radio in Orlando or in Indian River County, I'm happy to see that you're going to do radio in in, in Orlando, radio in the newspaper in Orlando Sentinel or whatever, magazine in Orlando. I don't have to have a specific Less specific there. specificity. I would be happy with that. And then when you turn in your money after you've done your radio advertising and you get your, you know, you've got your, it, oh yeah, you met your criteria. We have to see what that was. Okay. Okay. That's what I have. I wanted to mention, I think number question two and question three can be combined because they both speak, um, promote the space coast as a cultural destination. That point of both two and three. Or I think we can cover that in one of them. Um, I noticed that it does, um, it would take out, I've never seen an answer where they always ask um, what special cultural quality or what have you done to create a um, uh, publicity opportunity. I've never once seen anyone answer, well, we, our first night, our opening night is for the press. We have a special event for the press. No one has ever answered that. And I know they must have them. But I think that would be a perfect answer. And we don't usually get an answer for that at all, other than they. But it's like yes, so less unique, because I have a problem with unique. I, I, what is unique? Somebody please tell me what unique is. Well, why not? But, but all of these are. I mean, almost anything, but I'm just saying it's unique. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Okay. Um, is there a better word or? I don't know. If everybody, if, it, if everybody's cool with unique finding, I just. Well, you could just take unique out and say, and please describe your cultural, your um event that's being created. Just take that little, take all that out. Doesn't have to do that. Little, I'm just saying. You know, word sniffing. I don't know. I, I, somebody might have a problem with unique. But. Well, they, I, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with Andre in the, Andrew in, some, in the sense that they are kind of the same question. They are the kind of the same question. I mean, how do you, an event, a special event is a cultural activity that we have in our area. Now, some of them are more cultural. It depends on what you mean by culture. I'm going to go by what the term it means. But anyway, um, I don't have a problem if we combine it just to say, how is it a, you know, and then they can add in their PR opportunity, like the surfing Santas. That was a unique one. So they said, how many surfing Santas do you see? Exactly. But, um, that was unique. And they, and then they can, <laughs> whatever they, whatever they want to say about their event and how they're, and any PR if they get them, right? Aaron Collins, I agree with Bonnie. I mean, because we saw a lot of the answers regurgitate, exactly. you know, information from a previous question last year. Yeah. And because they're very right. similar. And we talked about this, I think, when we were crafting the yes. question. So I think it would be who of us. And, the, and the other thing, funny thing, after Aaron, is that when, you know, at the very first, when they started answering all those questions and they talked about how great their organization was, in that greatness of the organization, 
we saw what they were about and they took some of that that was there and put it here just to fill it yeah exactly so i'm i'm with you in the sense that maybe we don't need both of those they can put as much as they want in there about how great they are and how this can be a wonderful event for the for the area for the for, but we're asking them to promote these safe coast mm -hmm. as a cultural destination like why are they coming here specifically well if you want to see guys and dogs you got to go to the site of still theater it's not playing anywhere else <laughs> one of those ever says anything why is it specific to the space coast why are you promoting how are you promoting space coast? and if i i try to put myself in their place that's a hard question yeah that just that right there well unless it is something that's if you want to see that particular um uh, play you have to go there uh that would be about the only answer is i was right. with jim black and no I, I i'm just thinking you're talking about that and I'm, I'm thinking you know I, I got nothing. I love art shows. I think an art show is so cool. What's unique about an art show? What in the art show is unique? That's what they should be telling us as far as if we're leaving unique in there. I keep going back to that word. Well, I you think know, we what should be right there. What's unique? Is there, you know, well, that's probably not really I'm sure true. There is something, I'm sure there is something unique there. So, you know, to, Tell us. We're going to leave it in there. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Andrea suggested taking unique out and saying your cultural event, which is probably more accurate because you're exactly right. I'm one of five theaters. Mm -hmm. We're all theaters. We all do the same things. Yeah, but you know what's unique about what you do there than down in you know Melbourne. Correct. I mean, yes. Maybe it's a show. Maybe it's a show. Yeah, it could be a show. You know, something like that. Right. But you're right. I know where you're getting hung up on your the unique word, but you can easily change the word to your events or your cultural no, events. Sure. Yeah. So, so what I just as a suggestion okay. to move on is um, <laughs> combining two questions two and three. Uh, so there'll just be one question, yeah. and then the second sentence will read: Please, please describe the cultural qualities that will create publicity and opportunities on a regional, et cetera, et cetera. So then, sorry, so then questions uh, four and five become three and four, which would be the numbering, right? Right. So uh, I also want you to think about supporting documents. What do you need to see? Obviously, we see needs to be a budget. Operating budget with expenditures. Erin Collins, I feel like we need to at least see that with, since this is geared towards marketing, we have to see the marketing materials in some aspect. But I, I correct me if I'm wrong, they can upload whatever they like in supporting documents, and there's no limit on what they yeah, I'd like to give them some direction on that. Though. Yeah, I would say we'd have to at least see marketing material, you know, marketing three access. three marketing materials you used this past season, you know, an advertisement or postcard or something along those lines that shows that they're doing, you know, that they're marketing. Thank you. Is that in response to number three? Is that Hold on, Brian's going to Angela. I was just looking if Peter could read state. Um, question one more. Blending up the two questions. Okay. Number, uh, two and three. Okay, so combine questions two and three. Um, and the first sentence uh, after how did your proposed event season promote the space as a cultural destination? The next sentence would read please describe the cultural qualities. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, keep the remaining, and then uh, and then as Mr. Flatman requested, add 500 words at the end. Please be considerate. You'll thank me later. Thank you, Angela. Did Simon say anything you wanted to? Think yeah, about? I think I forgot what I was going to say. I think I'm just uh, you were saying number three is the, the the things that you add. Is that what you were talking about, Angela? For the upload? 
So the upload, well, so not the new number three is upload your marketing plan. So right. that's the marketing plan is, is is one thing. So that's essentially one document. Um, I think that probably in that area it would be a good idea to also say, you know, please include um, three or five whatever you want marketing assets to include something like a postcard or Facebook post or you know, give them some ideas because I think that they do. need the ideas. Could you have like promotional material for, you know, yep. just call it promotional material rather than just a playbill? And we, we look at seeing them for the last year budget. So we will, in grants past, we were asking them for last year's budget and then this year's budget. Mm -hmm. That still applies. We'd like to see what did they do last year? Yet? When all was said and done, what did they do? How did they do it? Also, I'd like to, um, there's usually after these events, there's um, a debrief for everybody that we had the event. <laughs> That's over now. What has happened? What did we do? What could we do better next year? What didn't go as well as we thought it would? So, what are you doing better this year that you didn't do last year? So, the new question number four, a little bit kind of dives into that. Um, please describe in detail how you would measure and evaluate the success of your event. Well, that's the objective. That's how it works. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because I know what I meant, but I don't know how they're going to interpret that. And I've seen lots of different interpretations mm -hmm. of that. So, back to the, um, the operating budget. Are you looking for expenses and revenue or just expenses? Oh, it's last and revenue. Okay. Yeah. Last year and then proposed for the. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Tell them what they're doing now and then how did it go last year? Because everyone's been in business at least two years. They had to have two previous events in order to qualify. So they would have something to go on. Right? Mm -hmm. would the yeah, would the organizations just Aaron be uploading? Yes, yeah, sorry. Would the organizations just be uploading their own, or are we going to have something they fill out a form? So um, I think it's a good idea to have like a template budget template. So then you all are looking at the same so, thing. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I just that's what I wanted to clarify. Make yeah. sure of that. Anyone else want to comment on it? Sir, the only comment that I want to make is um, you know. You could put you could put a marketing plan and show, but you're not, we're not proving that they really did that marketing plan. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I say that from I know that people have done that before, mm -hmm. so you just need to be cautious of that. Well, we would see that in the Aaron Collins. We would see that in the money spent in the reimbursements, correct? Well, only in the reimbursements. We don't see the regular their regular marketing plan. We don't know what they actually spent or whatever. Right. But when they get reimbursed, they have to show what they when did. they get reimbursed, they have to right. absolutely yeah. they they get the final their report. budget may show that they 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 were that they were doing every this whole event took me two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to put on this event. And then they got reimbursed for fifty thousand dollars, let's say. We don't know if they really spent two hundred and fifty thousand. We don't have any proof of that. So they can just do whatever they want. But I'm just saying that because it's been done. But if they spent the 50 and that we have around the 50, then absolutely. I guess it's really all in. All oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, right. Yes, that's what, yes. Okay, yeah. anyone else want to make a comment? And we're just going to do take a proof 20, pages 28, 29, and then move on to the rest of the thing. Yep. All right, so can I get a motion to accept the amendment or any amendment, the, um, the amendment that Peter the rephrasing? I'll make the motion to approve for your second. Okay. Motion came, second with Howard. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Move on. Okay, so page 30. So this is the score sheet that the committee will receive. So, um, so, you know, the top part of it is just sort of administrative stuff. Making sure that the you'll have on the on this score sheet the number of out of county visitors that were measured, and also the line up for that um, project is eligible for whatever dollars that they were eligible for in the scoring in the funding matrix, and then down below is the evaluation criteria. So that's essentially uh, question number one. So application clearly describes the proposed event. So I took that same wording from the page on page 28, question number one. So um, now 
the second question, question number two, and I think I'm going to put numbers on here. That was helpful. Yes. Um, question number two now has kind of been eliminated, so really needs to be combined with number three. Is that your desire to have the same? I would like to err on. Yeah. I would like to see the same exact wording that's yeah. on the application in this, in this block. So there's because it was a little convoluted last year, if I yeah. remember right. Yeah. So, um, so we'll match up the application questions with the score sheet questions. Um, so since we have eliminated one question, we're really down to. Um, so there's four questions and then one upload of their budget. So you could have, you could make five scores out of that. So is there four questions? I think there's only three questions. No, there's no. four. That's the thing is it's downloaded. Well, the upload of the marketing plan is it really a question. No, that's part. I, I kind of put the upload of the marketing plan as part of question three. And then you have question four, which is describe how you measure and okay. evaluate. So that's four questions. And then the fifth one, my suggestion is that you make a fifth ruling on the operating budget, the detailed operating budget. That they submit. That they submit. So yeah. that they submit. I would, Aaron Collins, would it be good to have the operating budget and maybe a score for supplemental materials as well? So, like, split that in half. So, a 10 and a 10. I mean, Uploading an operating budget is, I mean, that's great, but I, I mean, I think the supplemental materials as well is just equally important because that's the actual marketing materials. So I would say if we can have 10 points go towards uploading the budget and it meets criteria and then 10 going towards their actual marketing materials that were just. I usually take that into consideration when I'm scoring them is if they gave the supporting documents for the claims that they made, like we had one, one of the, one of the special events. They claimed that in previous years before their special event, the hotels in this time of year, that time of year, were down to 50%. But now, since we've been doing our show, and now they're at 100% all the time, well, they they just pulled that out of the air. And, and they gave us no supporting document whatsoever. And I graded them accordingly. If they're going to make a claim, the reason that you get my high school is you gave the supporting document with it. Um, so I just, if they upload it, they can, uh, well, I guess if they uploaded something that was really not supporting their their pace, I, I guess you could just not give them a good score on their upload. I don't know, but how, what does everyone else feel about having a separate score for the quality of the upload? I know something like the um, the Renaissance, we, I know they didn't apply last year, but when they have, they will upload maybe 20 different um flyers that they have and they're very pretty and they're very well done and they're all colorful and you're like dazz dazzled with the brilliance mm -hmm. and it's supposed to well I mean it's not supposed to but you can get distracted by all the brilliant uploads and not see the meat of the application because the uploads are brilliant are done really well. Right. So it, it's a half or halfway each. I, I think it all it goes back to the scorer again uh, to the time and the depth that they want to go into the scoring. But I don't know if anyone else feel about having a separate plan, but I think if we're going to add the them. score uh, uploads, then we need to be kind of precise on what we're looking for as far as your upload. What's the what is it that we're looking for? Marketing materials. I mean, this is solely that's, marketing. That's pretty, that's pretty broad. What, what particular are we looking for if we're going to score it? Well, I mean, last Aaron Collins, last year, I mean, this is just some people uploaded photos. That's not marketing materials. So, I mean, if someone uploads an actual ad that they use in the newspaper, that's legitimate marketing material. I mean, we, should, I mean, we could list out what are good marketing materials. What well, we're expecting to see. But then does that support that particular question, or do they get that question um, score, mm -hmm. and they now they get another score because they uploaded a good item? Yeah. Did they get it both? Yeah, I just don't think we don't. We had there's no point for supplemental materials whatsoever. And I think they're as important as the budget. I think giving 20% of just the budget is, I mean, it's a lot of points for. I'm just going to, here's our numbers of what we're going to do next season. Here's an easy 20 points. I mean, you can't repeat that really. You know, so I think 
something that you can, uh, you know, is the marketing materials and, and supplemental materials. It would be good to see those. Yes, it would. But are we going to score then a separate score for the uploaded? Is that what you want? What, to el what else are they there for? I mean, it just gives you more background on the group. So I feel like if you're going to have supplemental materials, they should be part of the score somehow. I mean, do you, when you look at them all, bring that back into the scores of judging like, oh, look at this great annual report, you know, even though it wasn't part of the question, is that playing into your points? So that's why I'm just suggesting maybe it is part of the score somehow. Well, as I look at, at their uploads and some of it has absolutely nothing to do with the question and I just go, oh, pretty picture and I move on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't give, I, I score their, their, their paper according to what we ask and what they answer. Sometimes they go down a rabbit hole and that's the score they get for it. Mm -hmm. As well, I don't really give them anything extra because of the uploads. The uploads support the score that I gave them. Okay. Yeah, sure. I, I, Jim Blackman. I think we're apples and oranges here because the uh, larger groups can give us what we're asking for, but the, some of the smaller groups, I, I think, are going to be fishing and not being able to garner 10 points for marketing materials that we're asking for. So, so leave it the way it is? Um, I'm just saying that my opinion on you know requesting marketing information to be scored. I just think that it's not even between maybe some, you know, a larger group that maybe has a marketing manager uh, and a smaller group that's, you know, just a, a manager, you know, a couple of people are putting, you know, and we know that there's small groups that, you know, we've said, you know, they don't have the money up front to pay for the $7,500, 50% uh, of the marketing on a county. I, I, you know, I just have a hard problem. I just, I think we do. Right now, I think you do. Uh, Jim, Jim, right now, your question is tears. I think that explains that. You're not going to see the same application for, you know, somebody at 125000 versus somebody at 150000 It's the same application for, for everybody. Well, I know, but you do. I, I expect a lot more out of the King Center to expect to see it than I do, you know, Exactly. What are we? Yeah, but what are we asking to see? Exactly. What are we asking to see? Like you're saying there should be a minimum criteria. I'm, I'm just saying that it's that the larger groups can probably provide us yeah. with a lot of marketing material, whereas the smaller groups cannot. cannot. Aaron Collins, but this is a marketing grant. I mean, so we're, I mean, that's the whole point of this whole grant. It is for marketing. And I, I mean, I would disagree, but I think some of the smaller groups have better advertising than a lot of larger groups, to be honest. I mean, if you and, and are more creative, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, marketing does cost money, but there are some really easy ways and creative ways that you don't have to spend money to market. And that, that's something I would like to see. So, I mean, what? I don't think anyone is larger than the air shell. And I think they waited until the last second and they just fluffed it through and you see what they got. Yeah. But yet a smaller group, like say Surfside, a um, much, much smaller group, they they got their grant. So it depends on the people and how much work they want to put into doing it. Karen. So if I Aaron. Jump here, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we sorry. Aaron and Rick, everyone. It's a, a Facebook post can be a marketing post as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. I mean, a Facebook post that you post can be submitted as a marketing thing. So, I mean, anyone can do that. So, yes. So, that's asking, what we're looking for. Yeah, asking for marketing assets is something you're looking for. I think any anybody in this round can do it. Okay. So, page 31, second question from the bottom. Granted, this is just a suggestion, consideration for me. I said, did the applicant include all the required supporting marketing documents? For example, a variety of three to five marketing assets, radio, text, brochure, playbill, Facebook post, poster, et cetera. So then at least that gives them some ideas and there's some criteria that you're judging them on. Okay. So hopefully that doesn't include photos, but you know, I think we need to be um, specific there, we can add others, but so everyone knows what they're doing. 
But I think in regards to that question, again, going back to the application, is there is there something in, refresh my memory, is there something in the application that says um, you're going to be supplying this information? You can put that in the application. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because all of a sudden they see this and that they know they're being graded on, oh, I didn't know I needed to supply that. So, so yeah. that will be um, in, that will, yeah, that will be in the okay. application and, and we'll have Great. the same Great. language. Yeah. In the application as in this portion. Great. So, how many questions do we have? And is the total equal 100? <laughs> now yeah, so, I, I just want to make sure. Okay. So, Trevor and I are on the same page here. Uh, the first on um, page 30, the first question is now going to be question one, and that'll sync up with the first question in the application. Uh, and then I didn't put I just put points, but you, you guys can change it. I just wanted to show you how I got to 100. So I put 20 points for that one. Then the next question is uh, the question sort of there, those two items need to be combined into one question, which would be question number two. And that would sync up with number two in the application. That would be 20 points. Then on page 31, uh, it asks about the marketing plan. That's question three. Again, that'll be syncs up with the question three on the application. That would be 20 points. Then the next one is application describes in detail how applicant will measure and evaluate. Syncs up with question four on the application. That would be 20 points. And then the two that Deborah just described, uh, question five would be that the applicant include all the required reporting documents, I think we should add some detail to that as to what that means, like marketing samples, et cetera. That could be 10 points. And then did the applicant submit a detailed budget? That could be 10 points, that's question six. So that gets you to 100. Now you can switch those around however you want. I just wanted to share how I was looking at it. Oh, <laughs> I know. the motion. Yeah. the motion to accept that. Second. I know. Second. Okay, so the motion is to accept what Peter Crane has said. Yes, the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 thank you. Motion uh, for We are done. Um, yeah. 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 Before we get into the public, one question that I'd ask, like to ask Peter. Um, I know that the county commission declined to give money to the air show. And I totally understood why. I watched it on TV and was very surprised at the presentation. Um, my question is they were saying no giving money to the air show for some sport. However, we like the air show. The residents love the air show, the hotels love the air show, it's a great event. My question to Peter would be, Peter, are you allowed to, since there's money in that budget, to promote the show yourself? Not out of the cultural budget. So the answer is yes, oh. we can promote We can promote it, and it's on our website as part of our special events page. It's you know something, obviously, we do talk about in public relations and various other marketing. But we can't spend dollars out of the cultural fund to do uh, advertising or marketing on behalf of an, uh, a group yeah. without their involvement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, public comment. Uh, the first card I received was from Corinne Braden. Yes. Hey there, thank you very much. Uh, Come to the microphone, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's turned off. Thank you. Hi, my name is Corinne Braden. I'm from Field Manor, um, and uh, thank you very much for uh, the grant last year. But actually, today I'm wearing two hats, and it may not have said on the card, and I'm not sure this is the appropriate time to ask this question, but I'm the vice president of the Museums of Brevard. Uh, we're about 22 museums here in Brevard County, and we promote each other, our different events and things like that. And we were wondering if um, I understand that we need two years under our belt to be a not-for-profit combined. We have probably uh, over 200 years, but we're a brand new entity. And we were wondering if it would be uh, worth pursuing applying for a cultural support grant, the 2023-24 uh, 
because we are such a new entity or if we might be considered, forgive the word unique, um, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, we were just wondering because we have been in businesses independently for quite a while and we do support each other culturally, you know, through um, cross promotion as well as when we do events, we hand out our uh, brochures and things like that. So forgive me, this may not be the right platform, but I thought I'd put it out there anyway. I think staff will probably get with you on that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Madam Chair, I did, I did have a question. Um, would your application be for a specific event or series of events that you would conduct together? Yeah, it would be. We have uh, we currently have meetings called Meet the Mob, uh, Meet the Mob, which does sound kind of bad, but uh, yeah, where we do these on the quarter, where we go to different facilities, and we have you know open it up to the public and we bring uh, exhibits and things like that, and and uh, try to get press there just to promote Brevard County Museums. And many of us, I as from Field Manor, I do a lot of I do many out of county events for Pioneer Life and things like that, and. You know, I give out as many rack cards for Field Manor as I do for museums at Brevard. So I don't want to shoot myself in the foot for Field Manor, but I, I would like to get the museums at Brevard out there and just in people's mind for the future. Yeah, I mean, I think my initial uh, thought within the committee can weigh in uh, would be, as, you know, as long as it meets the criteria of the guidelines, which we just went through, spent a lot of time going through and, and a lot of effort in, in uh, determining those. And then if it's something, you, you know, a unique set of events like what you're describing, it's not something that is going to be applied for in another way because they're in the guidelines. It doesn't allow to apply two different times for the same event. So as long as they're different, I think, you know, that should should qualify, but I'm open to the. So um, I think what Corinne is, is speaking of at the top of page eight. Um, there's the, sorry, page 10. So 5.0 eligibility. Private organization to be incorporated for a minimum of two years. So, and you've just recently become in January. Yes, I think that's your question. Correct. Thank you. Very, thank you. So, my, I have a question. So, my question would be Bonnie, can field, you, field. Would not be coming forward, but mob would be coming forward. Is that what you're saying? No, I I, I do need help, Martha. Yeah. So very sorry. Yeah. So in the past, what we've had were the museums of Brevard. Can you give us your name, please, for the record? Martha Pissarro, and I'll be talking right now as the recording secretary for the museums of Brevard. My elected position for that. The organization now having the 501c3 we've been working independently for probably five and a half years in the previous life we had a tbc marketing grant that built us a brochure that was gorgeous and bonnie remembers that beautifully when we had that that was out to each and every entity that we have in river county and beyond and now for the past couple of years, we've been funding that ourselves. And we're looking now at our marketing plan, getting a subcontract to get website, the other types of things that we need as an organization to market all of these entities under our umbrella of the museums of regard. Uh, so so you know that's you what we would be looking at as a project. Yeah, so I mean, according to this particular grant program, um, it has to be event based, not it can't just be marketing or media. So that would not qualify based on based on what we just did. Um, but if you wanted to apply for the events, I think you know, I think that then the question becomes, would we be able to waive the 501c3 requirement? And I, I think I'd almost have to take counsel on that one. I, I don't I don't know if I can answer that because I know you've been established, but you haven't been a 501c3. So, so come back in 2025. Yeah. How long has Mob been uh 501c since January? January? Oh, oh, okay. I thought you meant field was uh since January. Oh gosh. Okay, no, no. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for answering that. Okay, next speaker is Kathy Algeron. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm Kathy Algeron with Brevard Cultural Alliance. Um, I know that there was a great deal of discussion and deliberation on item 6.0, um, but I am going to circle back to that. Um, I, I just kind of wanted to raise a couple points for consideration. Um, I'm really mostly going to address some points in, through, the, through the perspective of the smaller cultural organizations. Um, number one, in regard to very specific out of county marketing, or out, out, I'm sorry, the words were out of county advertising. I think that may be a little narrowly defined because so much marketing, whether it's in county or out of county, is done digitally and online. So, you know, the, the website of organizations, the social media um, presence and social media platforms, those reach easily beyond Brevard County. So I think that out of county marketing may be a little narrowly focused. And then secondarily in regard to the 50% requirement of the grant funds, I think for the larger organizations, that is no problem, no problem ever. For perhaps even the medium organizations, less of a problem, but I've worked with the smaller, I've worked with all the cultural organizations for a really long time. And I do think that for the smaller organizations, that really would be an undue hardship. So I, just really wanted to say that to this um, to this group, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Kathy. Dr. Bizarro, I don't know if you want to talk. New hat. Different hat. <laughs> now I'm talking as the presenter for our Native Rhythms Festival as uh, the Native Heritage Gathering Incorporated which we're he heading into our 15th season. And we've picked the Buffalo as our logo this year. Again, I would like to uh, thank everyone for the evolution and the ongoing support to our organization and all of the other cultural organizations in Brevard County, putting together a cultural picture for who we are. And this, organization that's sitting before us is really important to making that happen. A lot of us rely on funding that comes from higher elevation through the state uh, grants that we have, and we've been pretty successful in getting support for those number of years, and the procedures and policies that have been set forward by the Florida Department of Arts and Culture are really sound uh, and beautifully produced procedure and process. And I would hope that some of our evolution would bring us into alignment with the procedures that they use, the rubrics, the most importantly for me as a, a writer of these grants and a recipient of the scorings, I would love to see your comments. And that was something that I found greatly lacking in the last year's uh, process. I did not get back written comments. Now, personally, as a level one, tier one reviewer or panelist for presenters for the state of Florida, which I've done for two years, and I'm signed up to do the third year, we have an obligation to provide each and every one of our, has been an average 30 applicants coming in for $150,000 each bigger places like the Phillips Center, Stras, all of the, the beautiful communities, a lot of municipalities, we have an obligation to give them back any feedback on what we have written that is deficient. If there's a, a scoring, we give that's deficient. 
is a part of our regulation that you've got to provide that data back to the applicant. Having done these grants to the state, to communities, to organizations, and to uh, corporations, I really appreciate that. And I've learned a lot from doing this panelist work. And I think that that's a really, really sound thing because it's very helpful for the grant writer to go forward the next year with a really good application. We get to understand exactly what is being looked for or where we're a little deficient. Thank you, Ms. So, thank you. Um, thank you. We do have, and I know we need to talk about it in our guidelines for maybe we need to make sure that we do continue to have the comment section so that the scorer can put in their comments. Um, and those comments are available to the um, to the uh, to the grant um, applicant applicants afterwards. You can have a kind always comment in mind because if I'm going to score you low, I want you to know why. So next year we can do better jobs. And if I score you high, I want you to know so you keep on keep doing it. So I know we didn't talk about it. I just assumed we would still have a comment section. Yeah, and um, last year's comments were emailed out to everyone. I know that there was not a lot of um, comments. So maybe there just wasn't any comment, comments on your event. But there were deficiencies, and I'd love to know why I was scored that way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Isabel Wright, you have anyone, and I should have told you in the first place, I'll speak if that's three minutes each. Why is that brought up now? I mean, that should have been brought up from the beginning. I think that's very unfair to not state three minutes. I'm sorry, I apologize for not stating it. It's kind of a standard three minute thing. So and there is actually, there's actually a sign posted outside of the form that you filled out that says that but it's gone over three minutes on several of the speakers. I've been watching. I know the first one ran long. There were two people out there. Oh, right. um, but there were questions. Almost. And yes, and we have questions, so we don't take away the speaker's time when we have questions. So Isabel Wright. Hi, my name is Isabel Wright. I am the president of the Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the president of the United Coalition Council, which is a 501c3. I'm here today because I think that there's a disparity in minority skating respondents. Um, I have sat here and listened to this meeting, and I just want to say that I really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. But I think we need to be inclusive and we need to have a seat at the table. What I mean by that is that our organizations are sometimes not as large as maybe the symphony or the, the, the Titusville. Um, we are small, but we provide big service to this community. We bring a lot of people into Burrard County and is not taken into consideration. Um, I just had an event in January that brought over 2,500 people to um, Brevard County, specifically Palm Bay. Um, it was called the Indian Pride Fest Festival. Um, and by uh, saying that we have to have two events per year before you can apply, that really limits the smaller um, organizations into getting that funding. That's number one. Um, I think that what Bonnie brought up is an excellent idea, and I understand about the marketing um, being uh, offered to the smaller organizations. I think that's amazing. Um, I understand that Peter said there was no uh, staff, but if you guys put something online that a smaller organization like me can use that as a pattern or as an example of how we can you know, do something that's going to satisfy your needs, I think that would be an amazing process. Maybe not have somebody one-on-one. -on -one, um, but having something online that's going to guide us into what you want and how you get it. You guys are here to provide us with guidance. You're here to provide us with the funding, not to make it so difficult that they, as an organization that provides for our, our whole community can't qualify to get any funding because you make it so difficult to you. I was with United Third Bridge for 17 years. I was with the Florida Puerto Rican Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for 17 years. This is a new organization because our founder passed away. So now, just like their organization, you consider me brand new. I'm not brand new. I know Bonnie for a very long time. Um, most of you guys that, that knew Samuel Lopez probably knew me because I was a president or a vice president. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to be a little more open and not make it so difficult. Not make it, oh, you scored a 10 on this because you don't know how to fill it out. So that disqualifies you. I don't think that's the way we should be uh, functioning. We should be helping each other. 
I want to help you. I want to get involved with your organization and I want to promote you. I want to do the same with you. And we should be doing the same for each other because the goal is the same thing to provide culture to the community. And I think that unfortunately, that's not the way sometimes it's presented or it's, it's um, received. And sitting there, that's not the way I received it. Um, I think that your idea um, for the hyperlink, I think that's amazing. Thank you, Ms. Brown. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that. Three well, minutes for me and six minutes for the other people. I think that's wrong. Thank like you. she said. The education part that you had asked about the, the BCA does do um, uh, um, the classes when you do the grant application well, so that you can. Um, I don't have a question. Why is the BCA processing these applications? Because one of the issues that I didn't get to was the issue that the BCA is processing these applications for you guys. Why is that? They're not there, they're simply making sure that they are a nonprofit and that they qualify. Like, why are they doing that? that? What makes them the organization to go to when we have other organizations that could do the same thing? What I'm trying to say is, what are they getting by doing that for you? Number one. Number two, what makes them qualified to be checking when that's what you guys are for? You understand? They're the Brevard Cultural Association. They're qualified for that. But I need to move on to the next speaker so we can get out to this meeting. Mm -hmm. But thank you very much for coming to the next slide. Teresa Lopez. Thank you, Teresa Lopez. I'm a former uh, Melbourne City Council member. Uh, and on those cards for uh, speakers, we accepted the policy of speaking here, but nothing was mentioned about three minutes of that policy. So maybe that should be included from now on. Anyway, I'll start with the objective of the B, of the TBC, which was established to promote growth, development, and quality of tourism um, to the Space Coast. Does that statement include growth, development, and quality of tourism to all diverse communities in Brevard County? They are, we are growing in this county and we need our culture events. Our people from all over the country would come to Bavard County to see these culture events. Where we have our events, we had thousands of people there. So you're not doing any justice by not including culture Hispanic events or any Hispanic uh, culture event. Now, um, I looked at this. Uh, I looked at the Space Coast. Uh, this is Space Coast uh, website, and I was surprised there are no pictures of any Hispanic events at that website or any inviting remarks made to encourage any minority visitors to come to our county and enjoy our activities whether they're Hispanic or not. But whatever policies or, or, or guidelines, excuse me, <clears throat> are in place by the TBC to promote tourism, they also must reflect our diverse community. And that means the whole Bavard County. And a way to reach this is, I agree with Isabel, maybe you should have different guidelines for a small organization and in a large organization, because it appears to me only the large organizations are the ones that are getting the money, and that is so unfair. Now, I also heard a remark that was made, and it bothered me. And don't, I'm not quoting anybody. You must find the score in order to get that organization you want funded. And I believe that's how the, the TBC has always worked. They always score the organization that they want to see every year performing their activities. And that is truly unfair. And I think we have to look at changing these policies and the mentality of the TBC. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. All right, and this is the public comment time. Are there other people who would like to speak? Please raise your hand or stand up or acknowledge if you'd like to speak. No? Okay. Oh, online. Yes, thank you. Um, do we have a moment? Can we be a little kind of someone online? Anyone on Zoom would like to speak? I don't hear anything. All right. Maybe we have a comment on the board. All right. Can I get a 
Motion to adjourn. So moved. Right now. Change seconds. Thank you. All in favor of them? Enter to the building. Thank you.